Hello, this is Brandon Weekly with Microchip, and in this video we're going to be talking about asymmetric authentication using Microchip's ECC204 Trust Element. We're going to spend some time giving a value proposition to this use case, and then we'll show you in Trust Platform Design Suite how you can implement it in your own designs. Before we get started with that, we'll go over a couple of things that you'll need in order to follow along with this demo. First, you're going to need a laptop or a PC that's running either a Linux or a Windows operating system. Next, you'll need the CryptoAuth Trust Platform Development Kit with the ECC204 add-on. Both of these you can purchase from the Microchip website. Next, you'll want to have the latest version of Trust Platform Design Suite installed. You can install this from a link that you'll find in the description, and it's completely free. Also free to download is the MPLAB X integrated development environment. You will need to download the latest version of that so that we can have all of our dependencies that we need for Trust Platform Design Suite to work properly. As a quick point of instruction on the setup, you see here that I have my Trust Auth board with a micro USB to USB A cable. Uh, this cable is going to plug directly into my computer so that it can interface with Trust Platform Design Suite. And in order for us to access the ECC 204, we have our plugin module here. We simply want to make sure that the text is oriented in the same direction on both of these parts. Or you can just double check that the grounds are connected to each other. You can see that the pins are labeled on, on both of them. And it will simply slide on just like that. And you'll connect it to your computer looking like this. To give some value to this idea of asymmetric authentication, let's use a common example of a host PC that we want to add a module to. This will be some PCIe-based accessory that we want to connect to the PC's motherboard. And the main questions that we're concerned with are, can I trust this device to do what it's supposed to and to do nothing malicious? And do I know where it comes from? Do I know who manufactured it and can I trust them? Now, there is a conversation that happens between these two devices. We'll say that they both have an ECC204 installed on them. And this will allow us to identify for sure that we know who this accessory is and, again, who they come from. And this conversation happens with what we call certificates. Now, these certificates leverage uh, public-private key cryptography. We'll not get too much into the theory of how that works here, but the main crux of how this works is the idea that you can give me your public key and you can give me your signature, a signature that was created with the private key, and I can verify whether or not that signature is actually valid without actually having to know what that private key is. So you generate a signature, you give it to me, and I can tell whether or not it's legitimate. Now, there are three levels of keys that we're concerned with. There's the root level, there's the signer level, and then there's the device level. This root private key, companies will pay huge sums of money to uh, ensure that this private key remains secret always. It's never connected to anything. It's locked in a vault 10 miles underground, whatever the, the security measures are. Uh, but this root private key is kept incredibly secret because on this rests the entire security infrastructure of your project. So, but what we do have access to is the root public key. So. Part of what we're fed when we pu plug this PCIe accessory into the computer is this root public key, as well as the signer public key, and then the signer signature. Again, that signature was created using the private key of the, uh, of the manufacturer. Now, with this certificate and with this root public key, we can run an ECDSA verify function. And again, if, we, if it passes, then we know that these keys, these signatures were created using a legitimate private key. Next, we go down to the next level, which is the device level. And the device will send its own uh, certificate over, which contains its own public key, its own signature. And we'll use the signer public key that we had from the previous step to run an ECDSA verify function yet again. And we can verify whether or not this device certificate is legitimate. So the first step is to establish the identity of the manufacturer. And the second step is to establish the identity of the device itself. If we get an affirmative on both of those challenges, we will then send a random challenge from the host to the client or from the PC to the PCIe accessory, and we'll tell it to perform some function, then sign that function and send it back. 
If it does so correctly, we are we run a final ECDSA verify function on that signature that we get, and we now have these three levels of trust where we can trust the root, we can trust the manufacturer, and we can now trust the device and we'll allow it to run as it intends. To program an ECC 204 trust element to run this asymmetric authentication use case, we'll want to start by connecting the two devices that we showed earlier to the computer, and we'll want to have Trust Platform Design Suite here open and running. So from the home page here in TPDS, we'll go to our Use Cases tab up here on the top left. We can filter by asymmetric authentication, and then scroll down and we'll find the ECC 204 Trust Flex Auth. We'll click on that. We'll allow this a few moments to load. Once this is loaded, we'll see the use case transaction diagram here. We, uh, we have our one option of the trust off board and the ECC 204 plugin module uh, as, uh, as our setup here. So we'll want to make sure that that is checked. And then we'll start by clicking on this first option or this first step in the transaction diagram. If you get something that looks like this, you'll know that your computer is recognizing that the ECC 204 is there. Otherwise, it will give you an error. We'll go ahead and select I squared C as our bus. And then as the name of our organization, I'll just say test. Now as denoted by this check mark, we can see that the generation of our uh, custom PKI was successful. Now we're going to want to read in our signer and device certificate. So we'll click on this number two. We'll go ahead and upload those certificates from our custom PKI. So we'll upload the root certificate first then the signer certificate, and lastly, the device certificate. That was successful, so we got another check mark. Next, we'll click on this number three to verify the certificates. No other action there, so that was successful. We'll then send the challenge response. That was also successful, and now we can uh, click on that number five to uh, show that we are now authenticated and ready to go. So we uh, accept the, the keys and the certificates that, that were generated, and we're ready to uh, set the device up and program it for asymmetric authentication. So to do that, we'll go back to our TPDS homepage. And then we'll select the Configurators tab here. From Configurators, we're going to find ECC 204 TrustFlex Auth under this TrustFlex column. Give that a moment to load as well. And then here we'll see that we have the options for either asymmetric or symmetric authentication. We want asymmetric for this case, of course. And there is some customization allowed here in these four slots, but for the sake of the demo, uh, we will simply leave them with the defaults. But we do want to select the ECC private key as a limited key use here. We'll then go ahead and click on provision prototype samples. Click OK. And the prototype board provisioning has been completed. So the, the chip on the board is now ready for this use case. Thank you for watching this video on asymmetric authentication with the ECC 204 trust element. Please check out the links in the description to learn more about the ECC 204 and asymmetric authentication. And check out other videos in the Chiptorial playlist so you can learn about other security use cases covered by Microchip. Thank you.